the rumors are true. If you decide to swap out the big bulky rear end of your Rebel 1100 for something sleek like the Burley brand license plate kit or any other lights for that matter, the cruise control on your bike will no longer work. But fortunately, all you need to remedy that is this little teeny diode right here that Burley brand actually includes in their kits now. So today we're going to talk about why you need this diode and I'll show you how to install it. Perfect. Welcome back to Life of Birch. This is Birch, and that's right, this tiny little diode is a solution to all of your cruise control problems after swapping out the rear lights of your Rebel 1100. You may have heard about this issue before, you may not have, you may have even heard about this issue on other Hondas, because it sounds like it's not just a Rebel 1100 thing, but fortunately, like I said, the solution is super, super simple. First things first, let's talk about the origins of this issue and how this little diode right here solves all of it. Okay, so let's take it back about a year ago when I first installed the Burley Brand license plate kit. If you remember the install video, I was the first one to ever do it, and for the most part, it went off without a hitch. I got it installed, everything worked perfect, and I loved it. I thought everything was good to go, but slowly thereafter, as more people started to get the kit and install it, they started reaching out to me, and one by one being like, hey, I have a question. Does your cruise control work after you installed the license plate kit? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't really use my cruise control, so it's never, like, I haven't checked it since I installed it, but also, how would your cruise control have anything to do with a taillight? And at first, I just thought it was like some fluke, like somebody installed it, and maybe they snipped the wrong wire or something like that and they messed it up but after like the third or fourth person to reach out and ask me about it I was like okay maybe there's something actually going on here so I reached out to my contacts at Burley Brand and I kind of explained the situation and I'm like hey I haven't had time to check my cruise control yet because it was like I don't know December or January and like 20 degrees out where I live so I'm like I haven't tested mine yet but three or four people have reached out asking about cruise control I have no idea how it would ever relate to brake lights and tail lights and turn signals but you guys might want to look into it and in the meantime I'll kind of do some research search to see if I can figure anything out. So they're like, all right, that's kind of weird, but we're on it. Let us know if you come up with anything also. So I started searching for an answer pretty much to no avail. I couldn't find anything that would tell me what the issue was. But then one day my buddy Fran reached out to me, who's one of the ones who had the issue. And he sent me a link to a Honda Goldwing forum and said, hey, check out this link. I think I found the answer. And in my head, I'm like, how does a Honda Goldwing forum have anything to do with what's going on here? But I'll be damned if it wasn't the same exact issue and the same exact solution. I'm going to explain this the best that I can, but I I know that I'm going to butcher it because I really don't know much about electrical and all that kind of stuff, but I'll link the link that he sent me down in the description so you can read it for yourself, and I'm sure that'll explain it better. Essentially, what was established is that, I guess on the Rebel 1100 and the Goldwing, the way that the cruise control works is that the computer reads off of the brake light wire. So you know how if you have cruise control engaged on your bike or in your car even, and you tap either of the brakes, it'll automatically take the cruise control off? Well, apparently, the way that these bikes read that is by the current that's going through the brake light wire. I would have assumed that it was like, I don't know, like the switch up here or something. Like when that gets depressed, they see, okay, the brakes are on. We got to turn cruise control off. But it actually reads it through the brake light wire. So I guess it's something along the lines of the computer is reading the current that's going through that wire. And when it's at a low current, it sees, okay, the brake light is not illuminated. So we're fine. But as soon as it reads a current that's too high, it assumes that the brake light is on and says, okay, we need to turn off cruise control. So what happens is that when you go from the big bolt bulky, essentially it looks like this, you guys saw it, from the big bulky stock setup that has like a big light that needs a bunch of power and these bigger lights and you go down to just these two small LED lights, I guess like the current is more free flowing through the wire so the computer is always reading that it's at the threshold to where the brake light would be on so it never lets cruise control engage. So on the forums they came up with the solution of this diode which I guess is essentially the same as that and I guess what it does is makes it so that the current doesn't flow through the wire as quickly or as high or whatever and brings it back to the correct flow or current or whatever so the computer only reads that the brakes are on when the brakes are actually on. Like I said, I'm sure there's electricians watching this that are like, this guy's an idiot. He just butchered that explanation. But long story short, cruise control reads off of the brake wire and this diode makes the current correct so that the cruise control can work. So I sent that link over to Burley Brand and they were like, all right, we'll look into it. They got one of the diodes, tested it out and they're like, dude, Hondas are so freaking 
weird, but yes, that was a trick. We're good to go. So since then, all of their kits have included this diode, and they're in the instructions as to how to install it. And any customers who had already bought the kit that didn't include the diode, they automatically sent the diode to so that they could remedy the situation. And that was months ago, but like I said, I barely use cruise control, so I haven't cared about it. But I'm about to go on a five-day trip on this bad boy, so I figured it's finally time to fix it, and I'll show you guys how. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention also that the bike has hyper flash with these turn signals because again the draw is different so the kit also now includes load resistors that you put in each of the wires so that it flashes at a normal rate but instead of the load resistors I got a uh, flasher relay right here from custom LED that just plugs straight in no wiring so we're going to install that also while we're under the seat so we can get both of them knocked out at the same time. Alright first things first we got to take the seat off you guys know the drill stick the key in all the way and turn it you'll hear a pop and the seat will come off. Then we got a Phillips head screwdriver right here to take these little push pins out and I say Phillips head but I recently found out which I probably should have already known but I guess Hondas don't actually use Phillips head they use a JIS head or something like that which is like the Japanese something standard so that is why I stripped the ever loving hell out of that bolt because I was using a Phillips head but it's actually slightly different it's the JIS I still haven't ordered a JIS so I haven't learned from my mistakes but I will leave a link to a JIS screwdriver in the description if you want to get one and not risk stripping out these bolts because the next step is taking out these bolts to get the battery tray out. I literally just have to undo my last one by hand because it's stripped out so freaking bad. <laughs> Alright, so these bolts are out, and then once this one is backed out, you can pop the whole push pin out. Kapow! And it pops right on out. And if your bike is stock, it'll look pretty much just like this. The only difference is that this is my little speedo healer to get rid of the top speed limiter, so you won't see that. First thing that we're going to do is the flasher relay, because it's the easiest, literally plug and play, and then we'll move on to the diode. Alright, so this little thing right here is the flasher relay, and it's on a little tab, so you just gotta slide it up and out like that. Then it has this little rubber boot cover that's underneath this clip right here, and you just gotta slide it out from that and slide it down. Easier said than done. Holy crap. Come on, dude. Release your hold. There we go. Oh, and it came unplugged. <laughs> okay. If yours doesn't just pop all the way off, though, you'll see that it slides in like that, and it's just a little push tab right there that you gotta push so it pops out of the little holder right there. So this is your stock flasher relay. We won't be needing that. And then we'll come over here to our custom LED flasher relay, the ELFR1. I'll leave a link to this in the description also if you want to get one of those. This is plug and play and eliminates the need for either of the uh, resistors for your turn signals and will eliminate hyper flash. Simple plug and play. Oh, you know what? Let me not get ahead of myself. I'm going to explain it as if you guys have never seen it before, just in case you haven't. I will plug that back in and show you what I mean by hyper flash. Turn on left turn signal and we'll come back here you see how fast that's flashing obviously way faster than stock so we'll push down on that and unplug the stock one again take the little plug and play jaunt and plug it on in turn the bike back on and now we'll check oh i left the turn signal on too i do that all the time but yeah works perfect you can see how slow it's flashing now so it's back in line with the stock flash rate and we are good to go no wiring required just plugs right in then we'll just sit this down in there out of the way somewhere all right so that was the easy step and now we'll wire in the diode which is easy also but not quite plug and play you'll see all right so the wire that we're looking for is going to be in this little bundle right here and it's going to be this green wire with the yellow stripe it'll be in the blue plug next to the brown wire right there and the convenient thing is that the the diode has to go in line with that green and yellow striped wire, but it doesn't matter where it goes as long as it's before it splits out to the tail light. So as long as you do it before the split, it'll work. So we can just do it from underneath the seat. We don't have to take everything else apart to uh, redo it. So that is super, super convenient. So once we've located the wires, we'll unplug it and you'll see it right there. And just to test to make sure that is the right wire, we could even turn the bike on and you'll see no tail lights. So that is indeed the wire that we need. All right. So Mine is wrapped with a bit of electrical tape here, so I'm going to take that off so I can slide this casing further back. So with that off, we can slide this casing down a bit to expose more wire so we have more to work with, and then we'll get to slicing and dicing. Alright, so the casing slithered back as far as it'll go, and then like I said, we're using this green wire right here with the yellow stripe, not to be confused with the solid green wire over here. We're using this one that plugs in with the brown wire. So we'll take our wire cutters slash wire stripper, and I'll cut it pretty much in the middle of where I had it pulled back so we have plenty of room on each side and give it 
a quick snip. Then we will use the 20 to 22 gauge stripper portion to strip it back about an inch. I might even take a little bit more off that. We'll see, but that's a general idea. And then we'll do that with the other side by the plug. Strip that off. Shazam. All right, so then we're just going to grab our diode, and what we're going to do is wire it in line with that wire with the gray portion of it facing towards the back of the bike and not towards the socket. So we're going to put it right in line like that, and they say to solder it, but I've never soldered anything in my life, and if you guys remember, when we did the tail light kit, I just used these weatherproof butt connectors, so that's exactly what we're going to use again. Essentially, we just stick the diode in one end of it, making sure that it goes through the middle, and then stick these wires in just the same, crimp it down in the middle, and then we're going to heat it up with our heat gun so that this does a weatherproof seal. So I'm going to do the front portion first, so not the gray side, and we're going to stick that into its home and these butt connectors are a little bit tricky with these because this wire is solid and it's not like multiple wires like that so it might take a little finessing to get it into the middle and like held in place but once you get it you should be good and then once you're confident in that you're going to take this side of the wire and stick it down in there as well which it actually doesn't look like it wants to Two, because the solid wire took up so much space. So we might have to use the bigger ones. All right, so it ended up being pretty clear that both the diode and the wire weren't both going to fit inside of the pink smaller gauge butt connector, so I had to use the bigger blue one. But the issue with that is that they only shrink down a certain amount, and it obviously won't do the weatherproof seal around this wire, let alone the skinny diode. So after realizing that it wouldn't shrink down enough for even that, I just cut off the flared end towards the diode, because I didn't want to, like, put the heat by the diode just to melt it down and still not even have a seal, you know what I mean? So, like, that's how big the flare is, and I cut it off so that we can just heat shrink over it and the heat shrink will fit right over that but the heat shrink obviously would not fit over the flare so I had to cut that off hopefully that made sense so I'll show you I just took my knife cut the one side flare off and now that we know this you could honestly just probably cut both off and you obviously don't even need the weatherproof ones you could just use a regular butt connector but lesson learned so then we just take the side where we cut the flare off and we stick the diode in that side and then stick the wire through the other side but like I said we're gonna heat shrink it and we'll probably need this whole length of it so we'll slide this down a bit more and put the heat shrink down here while we work on this. Then once we're done we can slide the heat shrink up and seal everything up. So we'll slinky everything down even further. Take the heat shrink and we might not even have enough space still. Yeah not even close. So I'm actually going to cut this back a bit. Peel it back for a bit more space. Alright so we cut it back far enough that the heat shrink can go over the entire thing. The diode is already slid into a little tunnel in there and then we'll take this wire and slide it in there with it and then once they're both in there we'll take our crimper right in the middle and crimp that joint down with all of our might and boom they're in there snug not going anywhere then we come back to our trusty heat gun over here and we're going to melt down this little flare so that it's small enough for the heat shrink to slide over and i don't know why i only cut the one side off i already said that we didn't need to use the weatherproofing part so probably don't need to be doing this you could literally just use a butt connector and heat shrink and not have to be heating this up but here we are because i didn't think through <laughs> what i'm doing so now that we have that end melted down as far as it will go we'll slide the heat shrink over everything there we go everything is nice and protected and before i shrink down this heat shrink and while we have like all the exposed stuff covered i'm gonna plug it back in and go for a quick ride just to make sure that it does have cruise control now 12 seconds later all righty moment of truth hit the set button and we are good to go baby let's go cruise control back in business turn on the turn signals and it's flashing at a normal rate let's freaking go all righty test run was a success we got cruise control and normal functioning turn signals now we just gotta heat shrink this and tidy everything up and then this is what it'll look like once you're done you got the heat shrink in the middle shrunken down as far as it'll go and then on each end we got electrical tape for added security to make sure we're all sealed up nice and tight and then i'll probably personally slide this all the way back up as far as it'll go and then make it all clean with some electrical tape wrapping up through here. You don't have to if you don't want to, but my OCD would love it if I did. And then we'll plug it back in, put the storage box back under, seat back on, and we are good to go. So hopefully that helps show you guys just how simple this is to knock out and get your cruise control working again. No soldering required, just a couple of butt connectors and some heat shrink. And like I've said before, I have no idea what I'm doing with electricity. So if I can do it, you can do it. Don't be nervous. You got it. And hopefully it helps answer some of the questions that I've been getting because I have gotten some DMs that are like, hey, I watched your install video, but it didn't include the diode or the load resistors that I got in my kit. 
it. I'm hearing that the cruise control won't work. Is that true? Is that what the diode's for? How do I install it? So hopefully that gave you some clarity and showed you just how simple it is to do. Shout out to Burley Brand for being so quick on getting the problem resolved and including the diodes and all the kits now. And shout out to my Patreon members for making all of this possible. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Love you guys. Peace.